go. Yeah, too many windows popping around out there. Okay. Uh, I have to do that because otherwise the game itself, um, it will appear normal to you guys in the video, but to me it'll just be a little box up in the corner. Um, but anyway, let's, let's get down to this. Now, if this game was originally created by a company developed by a company called Microprose, which is now defunct. They no longer exist. And uh, so this game is now Abandonware. Um, if you are interested in playing this, once I finish the video and it's uploaded, I will put in the video's description a link to a website where you can download this. Now, there's a number of different downloads for this game available out there, um, but the one I'm going to link to you guys is the one I recommend that you use. Any of the other ones that are available out there besides this one has all kinds of bugs and issues with it. Um, this one is complete, and if you've never played Magic before, the, the trading card game or otherwise, um, I highly suggest you get this one because the tutorials that were available on the CD, the original game CDs, um, are fully restored in this version and you can run them. So if you've never played this game and want to learn how, excellent tutorials that you can use to learn how to play the game itself. I'm not going to go through those with you because I'm not here to teach you guys how to play the game. I'm here to demonstrate the actual PC game itself. So, um, let's get to it. Alright, where are you? I hate you resize this and everything goes goofy. So, here we go. Alrighty, let's get started. Now, this isn't how the original game looked um, when you first started up. Um, well, you know what? I could show it to you here. What the heck? That's what the original CDs look like. And I'll play the intro movie for you guys right now. Uh, unfortunately, I can't maximize this window, so... I am the guardian, immortal protector of Sandalar, a world rich in magic. Five guilds have I made to prevent the misuse of men. Five wizards have I appointed to lead these guilds. The great barrier I created to protect us from those who would plunder our home. It has always held but now Chandelar has attracted the attention of a cunning planeswalker called Arzakhan. Projecting its spirit onto our world, Arzakhan has turned the five wizards against me, promising power and immortality. Branded together, they attacked my stronghold and killed my body, leaving my spirit to search Chandelar for a champion. Meanwhile, the wizards have sent their creatures in a race of mana, Ravaging the land as they seek to cast the spell of dominion. But Arzakon has lied. Dominion is not power. Once cast, it will shatter the Great Barrier, and Arzakon will take Shepherd. My one hope is that you are the champion I have sought. If you can defeat the wizards in their castles, Arzakon may yet be denied.
Okay, wasn't that neato? I thought so. Uh, so that's what the original installation CD, uh, when you popped it in, auto-played it, that opening video would, would play, and then you would install the game. Um, uh, that music that you heard, um, well, I'll get to that here in a second. But anyway, um, so here, the way this game is available now, um, from the site that I'm going to give you on the video, on the video's description, um, this is a complete ISO, um, and you install it, and this is the launch screen that you get. Um, that was from the actual CD itself, um, which is, uh, which is where the tutorials are available and stuff like that. If you've never played Magic and want to learn how, you can learn how right off of that CD once you've installed this. Excuse yeah. me. But anyway, let's get right to it. Um, the meat and potatoes of Magic the Gathering Duels of the Planeswalkers is Chandelar. Um, which is the single player campaign game, which is here under World. Um, when you first launch the game, this is the screen that you'll get. Um, there's several options here available to you. Dual, tools, uh, there's a complete help section. Um, the world of Chandelier, of course, and the player. Um, this is for, you create your own persona for your online play. And believe it or not, online play still actually works, which is cool. The only way that you can play it, though, is over an IPX protocol network. Um, for you young kids don't know what an IPX protocol network is, uh, Google it. Or you can play over a LAN. Um, so you got a couple buddies, they're over, they all got this installed on laptops. Everybody get on the network and you can play against one another in tournaments. Um, not going to go into any of that stuff now, today. Um, I plan on doing a series of videos about this game. So I'll do each section in a different video. Um, we're going to spend a couple of videos here on Chandelier because there's a lot to do and it's very cool. So here we go. We're going to click on this. And we're going to save the world of Chandelier from destruction. Woohoo! Um, if you clicked on this view the opening animation for Chandelier button here, it won't work. You can only launch the opening animation from the CD itself, which is down here. So here we go. We're going to click on Chandelier and get started. Presented with the start new game, load save game, resume your last game, or exit of course. We're going to start a new game. Select difficulty level. There's four difficulty levels that you can play in Chandelier on. Apprentice, which is, you know, basically for two-year-olds. Magician, Sorcerer, Wizard. Wizard is freaking insane. Uh, I've tried to play it several times. I don't even come close to beating it. Um, it's nuts. It's, it's if the AI opponents that you face have... They know exactly what's in your hand, it seems like, while you're playing. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, for demonstration purposes today, we're going to go on Riri level. Um, then you get to select your color. Um, you start with about 30, I think it's 34 or 36 cards at apprentice level in your deck. Um, all of one color. Uh, each color is representative of the different mana that's available. Um, red, as you can see. Specialized in violence of chaos and combat. Um, white is on healing, protection, and the chivalrous arts of war. Uh, black. Uh, black's magic power comes from death and decay. Cool stuff. Uh, green. Um, like nature, green magic can bring both soothing serenity and thunderous destruction. Green is very versatile. Um, just ask my son, Heimer Ginger, how many times I've kicked his ass in tabletop with an elf deck that I built. Um, blue magic thrives on mental energy, artifice, and illusion. Blue decks are very nasty. Um, can be anyway. Um, uh, what the heck? Let's start with... Uh, 
We'll do a red deck. All right. You're then presented with creating your persona within the world of Chandelier. Um, you don't look like this on the actual little game portion, which you'll see here in a minute, but this is just your face. Um, you can carry the same face over to the other aspects of the game, which we'll go into on, on the different days and in, in different videos. But, uh, but uh, there's tons of different wizards you can choose from, different variations of those wizards. Um, ooh. That's a creepy dude. No crab arms going there. Weird. Um, and then you can, then you get to select, you know, different clothing there. And we'll get to it here in a second. But uh, since I'm old, I like the old guy. I always go with the ge geezer here. So um, I like the blue robe. Um, I like the uh, bluish purple kind of cowl that goes over there. Uh, his head doesn't matter because we're going to keep the hat on him. I like the blue hat. And uh, I like him to have this little magic crystal dust uh, floating out of his hand there. I like it. I like it. You can save it. Um, Theo for me. We'll save it. And then you click leave. Once you're done, click leave. And boom. You enter your name. Your name. Your name, of course. My name is... Slim Shady. No, Theoricus it is. And then you materialize right in the world immediately. Um, use keyboard controls in this game or the mouse wherever you click in the game world itself on the map as you're walking around is the direction you'll go. It's easier to use the number pad. Um, you can move diagonally so it uses all the numbers. Five stops. Seven, eight, nine, four, six, one, two, three. You know, just think of the cardinal points on a compass, and that's the direction that you'll go. Um, on the map, outside there in the world you saw, um, you'll f come across these little different villages or cities. This is this is the game map itself. This is the section that we've explored so far. Uh, not too much, as you can see. It's big help. We'll get into that later. But uh, your village or city screen, when you enter a village or city, this is what you're presented with. Uh, you can buy cards for your deck. Edit deck or sell cards that you don't need. Um, you click in the middle here. You can either begin a quest or sometimes there'll be other stuff here. We'll get into that in a second. Um, as you're wandering through Chandelier, you consume food. Um, if you run out of food, uh, you move really, really slow. And then all the bad guys that are roaming around can catch you a lot faster. Um, and then you click over here to leave the village. Uh, down here on the HUD, we've got uh, the amount of gold that we have right now, our food. This is our life points. You start off with 10. Um, this is the total number of cards in your deck by the total number of cards that you have in your collection. And we'll get into what these things are down here. These are gemstones, mana stones, a couple different names for them within the game, and are connected to world magics that you can use. I'll discuss those here in a minute. The button up there to the left takes you to the deck screen, the same as the button over there in the city thing. This is our current deck. Any other cards, extra cards that we have in our collection would appear down here at the bottom. Um, these are filtering keys. You can filter out or in white cards. Blue, black, red, and green, of course. Multicolored cards. Lands, which are mana, which you tap to cast. If you played Magic, of course, you know that. Um, artifacts which are colorless spells or creatures. And you can also filter by type, which is creatures, enchantments, instants, interrupts, sorceries. And you can also filter by casting cost, power, toughness, that's for creatures, 
ability, and rarity. So, we started off as a red wizard. We have a red deck, as I showed you. Um, got a pretty decent collection of low casting cost creatures. And a couple of enchantments. And a few artifacts, including a couple of artifact creatures. Big nasty one there. Clockwork Beast is also pretty big nasty. And just a basic artifact, which of course you'll see me use here in a bit. So, um, you reach that screen by clicking on that button as well. So here we go over to here. Um, I showed you the map. Um, there's a couple of buttons up top. Give you the city info. These are cities that you've explored, the mana stones that are available there, cards that they have for trade, uh, world magics that are available at that city. We'll talk about those in a second when we get to one. And if you have a mana link with them. Uh, like I said, you start with 10 life points. You can get up to 20 or actually higher um, than 20. But 20 is all you really need. And you go on a quest within that city if you don't already have a mana link with them and you can gain a mana link or get another life point if you complete that quest. It's pretty neat. Um, we're here just at a village. This isn't a city. This is Windless. And they give you quests for different kind of things. Um, we'll see what this one is. Defeat the Beastmaster, which has been menacing our village. Return here, and I'll reward you with three green amulets. You can accept or never mind the quest. Beastmaster, whoo-hoo! I think they have 12 or 14 life points. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head. Pretty nasty little critter. Um, we're not going to do that quest. A little bit out of our range. The button below the map is called Dungeon and Castle Clues. We haven't gotten any clues yet, so this is, of course, going to be blank. And I'll explain to you when we get one what those are. Um, moving over here. This is our stat screen. Okay. Our picture of our, of our dude. The same thing you saw on the outside of the screen. The number of mana stones that we currently have. And some stats down here. Um, these five things over here are the wizard castles that we've conquered. Attempts at each castle and dungeon treasures and these are the world magics the only one that we have currently and you each start with one depending on which color you start with. Um, ooh, the staff of thunder you can risk a red amulet to destroy the nearest creature that takes place out on the world map while you're roaming around um, now wizard stats these are the five wizards, as you heard in that opening video, who were lied to by Arkazan and are now trying to cast the spell of Dominion because they believe it's going to make them more powerful. Um, as you face off against different creatures roaming around on the world, um, you take away one of their life points. They currently have 30. You want to get them down to 20 because that's the lowest they can go to. So you defeat 10 of each color. Go into the castle, kick their ass, and move on to the next. Um, that's ultimately the goal. You defeat all five of those wizards. You face off against Arkazan, who has like 100 life points, 100 cards in his deck, and... For as many life points as you take them down by is a number of thousands of years that you've saved um, the world of Chandelar from from evil, whatever the case might be. I don't know, kind of a goofy ending. But uh, it's just a cool game because I love magic together. So, moving on. Uh, we don't need to get into the journal thing yet because we haven't gone anywhere. So we're not going to do this quest. We're going to leave the village and wander about. Explore some of the map here. See these random things that will pop up here? They just pop up randomly as you're roaming around on the screen or, or in the world. And um, 
sometimes there can be a bazaar where you can use gems or gold to buy cards. Um, it's just a random card like this. Um, it could be a creature hoarding some cards. Rares. Not uniques, though. Just rares. Um, the uniques are only found in dungeons. And we'll talk about dungeons here in a second. As soon as we face off against the guy. And if I saw... There was a little green dude running up behind us. So, as soon as I click off of this, I'm going to stop and let him catch me. I apologize for how loud the music is. There is no option to lower the volume, unfortunately. What I did have to do once I got this game installed here on my computer um, to turn the city and village music down, I had to take each one of those local music files, open them up in an audio editor, and reduce the volume. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to talk to you while I was doing this video. All you would hear is the stupid music. So I had to lower it just so I could do this video. But anyway, here we go. Um, Duel this druid. Or pay 40 gold. Your auntie. His auntie. Okay. We're going to duel him. Just so you can see how this works. The start of every duel. There's a coin flip. He won the toss. He didn't take a mulligan. Seven cards are dealt. And here we go. Um, he's going first. Like I said. He laid out his first mana, and here I go. Alrighty. Ooh, Mishra. Come on, give me a stone. Ring. That would be really nice. Oh, oh this will do. A little giant strength on my ornithopter. And let's go into combat. Isn't this neat? If you've never played Magic before, um, like I said, when you download this thing, if you're even interested, and you download this version of it, those tutorials are there. You'll learn how to play. But uh, this, the game screen itself lays out all the phases. Um, untap, upkeep, draw phase. Your first main phase, pre-combat, combat phase, post-combat main phase, discard, and a cleanup. And um, over here on the left side, I should have explained, these are my opponent's life points. These are mine. Um, this is our graveyards. All right. Uh, this is our library. You right-click on it. You can count the library cards, how many you have left in your deck. Um, I only have 26. He's got 50. Alrighty. And this big picture here is whatever card that you hover over, enlarges to the left to show you what it is. So that you can read it. Um, let's go over here and expand the text box. You can do that so you can read the entire card. Alright. Let's let him go. Mishra's Factory, of course, is an art of uh, a land that can be turned into a 2-2 artifact creature. It's really cool. But uh, here we go. His turn. Okay, these red dots, you can mark each phase to stop. I always put stops in at certain points based on the type of deck that I'm running. Otherwise, it'll just run right through the phase, and you'll miss an opportunity to cast something that otherwise wouldn't automatically hold the game in place to give you the opportunity to. Um, like I said, if, if you played Magic, you know what I'm talking about. Ooh, two Mishras, and he's laying out a Lager. Uh, doesn't help him. He's about to die. All right, I'll just throw a land out there just for the heck of it. 
Um, just to be a dick. I'll kill his Laedrid. And then insult to injury. I'll kill him. Okay, he's dead. You get this animation screen afterwards. You see a skull appear at his feet, and you see a little red dot appear on his staff. Now, like I said, if you counted each one of those dots, there's 30. You can take him down to 20 life points total. You want to try and do that before you go into the castle to face each one of these baddies. But uh, that animation screen will freeze there until you click. And your grant. Let the music play. Like I said, um, music's very loud and there was no option to turn it down, unfortunately, in the game. But anyway, um, you have the option of taking these cards for having defeated that guy or taking a dungeon clue. Now, dungeons contain very powerful, badass, unique cards. Unique because you can only have one of them at a time in your deck. Um per magic rules and uh, you can get clues and hints as to a where these dungeons are um, the cards that are available in each one of those dungeons and uh, other things the type of creatures that are inside of it if there's any special effects that are constantly in effect when you face off against critters within those dungeons so just to show you we're going to take the dungeon clue Mound of the Warrior Kings contains these three uniques, Mox, Force, and Time Twister. And our first clue is it contains small red creatures. All right. We don't know where that dungeon is located yet. It's somewhere on the world. Um, but we got our first dungeon clue. Oh, what a nice guy. You are an adequate apprentice. You get plus two lives in your next duel. It's mighty white of you. Thanks a lot, guy. All right, here we go. Um, let's head up to this village, take a look at our map here. I'm going to head to a city so we can uh, check out if there's any other world magics available nearby. Um, Celestine Sanctum. Let's head over there. Uh, we can get a quest from this village. Let's see what it is, just for the heck of it. Take this message west to my brother, the keeper of Zephyr Sanctum. He'll reward you with a mana link. Yay! Okay, we're going to accept that quest, because all we got to do is run over to the city, and we get another life point. You have four days to complete the quest. As you'll see down here in the right-hand corner, on this scroll, our current quest... And any bonuses we get in the next duel are listed here. And then the number of days we have available to us in order to complete it. That little timer spins when you're out in the world and goes down um, based on how much time you're out there in the world. It actually takes quite a while for it to go down. So um, you'd have to be wandering around aimlessly for quite some time to actually not be able to complete a quest. So here we go. Now if you go over here and click on this little dungeon thing, that's what I wanted to show you. Look, Mound of the Warrior Kings is there. If you click on it, it gives you the clues you got for it. Yay. Okay. All right. Once you've taken a quest from this guy, you can speak to him. And sometimes he gives you stuff, like maybe another hint or some bonus life points. Or he'll show you a deck of a high-level creature. It's pretty neat stuff. So let's click on him and see what he has to say. Ah, just more of the storyline. Nothing important. So, let's move on. Oh, look, we got an extra card here. Oh, that's Urza's Chalice we picked up when we ran into one of those run, uh, random pop-ups there. Whenever a player plays an artifact spell, you may pay one. If you do, you gain one life. That's actually not a bad little thingy here. Um, matches never last long enough to get out this Colossus. So I'm going to take it out of my deck, and I'm going to toss in Urza's Chalice. 
And I'm going to sell this. What? You're selling a 9-9 creature? Uh, these matches generally don't last long enough for you to even get this guy out. So, Especially with these crappy early decks. So I'm going to sell it. Get us some extra gold. And where are we heading to? Let's look at the map. We're going to Zephyr Sanctum up there to our left. It's the direction we were heading anyway. So, And it's a city. So let's, let's head on up in that direction. Hopefully we don't run into another baddie on the way to slow us down. Let's run up here. Ooh, just a random card sitting there. The keeper is pleased to receive his brother's letter. You create a mana link here. Yeehaw! Isn't that awesome? As you can see, we now have 11 life points. Oh, crucial. If you're playing this, I should remind you. Save. And save often. As you can see, I already started a game earlier. We'll get to that one another time. But, uh... Each one of these villages and cities have pretty much the same stuff within it. Um, you can go to your map screen, see which direction you want to go in. Um, now if you click on... Oh, this little thing I forgot to show you here. Record versus the creatures of Chandelar. If you scroll down this here... Oh, look! There's the druid we faced. We're 1-0 against green druids. Isn't that nice? That's the only one that we've fought against so far, so... Um, alrighty. Let's move on. Now see here in the middle, at Zephyr Sanctum, you can trade black amulets for white cards. We only have one black amulet. Uh, for the ultimate power deck that I use for the end game, um, I do need white cards, so let's take a look here. Um, all the other colors are blacked out. You can only select light, uh, white, sorry, but you can go to lands. Um, there are multi lands. I do use tundras, but I think you may need to need more than one black amulet. Yeah, we need three. Oh boy. All right, let's go to instance. I think I can get a Swords to Plowshares, because it's pretty common. Nope, I need two. Dag nabbit. So, well, we can't really do that here yet. But, if you can't afford to buy anything when you click on that, click Done, begin a quest. Now, if you do a quest for this guy, he give you any white card you want, if you complete the quest. Let's see what it is. Defeat the Mind Stealer. Holy crap on toast. Are you kidding me? I'll reward you with white cards. Alrighty. We're just going to leave that one there for now. Mine Stealer is a little bit too big for us. Let's check the map. Let's head down in this direction, see what we run into. Ooh, another world magic available to us. Now, oh, that's what I forgot to tell you. Those five evil wizards? Well, send out their minions to attack the cities um, one at a time usually except in the uh, more higher difficulty levels you could sometimes get two or even three at a time that are attacking these cities and they run around it for a while and they cast a, a mana dome over it and they capture it um, if they do that three times you lose um, if you get this world magic, which is available at Celestine Sanctum for 600 gold, it would force them to do that five times. Now, once they've cast a dome over a city, you can go to it, that city, face off against the minion that was there, who cast the dome over it, face him, defeat him, and the city is freed. So the wizard will be back to whatever it was, however many mana taps that they currently have. Um, you want to try and keep them at zero, obviously. But, uh... 
Ooh. We don't have 600 gold. Not even close. So let's roam around here. <laughs> it's so menacing. Uh, duel this elvish magi. Or toss 40 gold at him. Let's duel his butt. Um, running a little short on time, so this will be the last duel I'll do, and, and then I'll and wind up this video for today. Uh, toss came up heads. He won the toss, and we'll play first. See, you don't get to select. Oh, it sucks. The opponent does. It's not fair. But anyway, um, our auntie's clockwork beast. Eh, no love loss if I lose. And his is hurricane. And there'll be actually more cards that you win. But anyway, let's start this duel. He's going first. Screen guys always have a Lanoir elf. Alright, let's put up my mountain. And let's get... Bye-bye, Lanoir Elf. Don't worry, he'll have another one. Oh, even worse, I should have held on to that. Yuck. But anyway, um... Well, I got a blocker here. Not really, because Elvish Archer has first strike. Deals its damage before you do. And if you die, or if the creature would die, then it takes no damage. So it looks like I'm going to be taking two points of damage here on his turn. But I'm going to get this one out anyway. Get this one out. I'm blocking. Alrighty. Now I can block. And right now our goal is to get this Earth Elemental out and start pounding on him. Looks like he's getting mana. Man, he's skanked over there. Well, I'm, I got plenty of mana flowing out of this deck. So, ooh, I got an idea. Let's cast. Oh, no, I can't attack with Goblin Rock Sled because he doesn't have any mountains. So that's all right. I always forget that. And here we go. Now we can get this bad boy out. And my next turn, I'll put Eternal Warrior on it. And... Oh, I wish I had a Black Vice out. Jeez, he'd be dead already. Let's put on our. Let's throw this on him. Let's put her out. Put her out just for the heck of it. Yeah. Why, why not? Now we can kick some butt. Winter Blast, tap X target, Winter Blast deals two damage to you. Whatever. You killed my bird maiden, scumbag. Alright, let's get rid of his Elvish Archer. He's forced to block now because he will die if he does not. Bye-bye. And... 
I'll put out my clay statue just for the hell of it. Oh! Gain another life point. I forgot that works for me too. I thought it was just opponents. Okay. And what you gonna do? Oh, uh, little stream of life. Too little, too late there, Slick. Don't really need to put that out, but okay. Bada bing, bada boom. And he's dead. And the little green wizard takes another shot in the chest. <laughs> He's down to 28 life points. Okay. Ta -da. Now I can take these cards. Two hurricanes. No, I don't build green decks. At least not on this iteration. So, I'm going to take my second dungeon clue for Mound of the Warrior Kings. Uh, it will be a different dungeon because there's eight or nine of them, I believe, plus the castles, five castles. So here we go. Um, dungeon rules. No red cards allowed. Ooh, that sucks. I need that Mox Jet and Time Twister from my deck, too. Hmm... Looks like we'll be hitting that dungeon last, at least in this game anyway. <laughs> and we want a green amulet. Isn't that nice? Uh, oh, we must have been running into one of those little miscellaneous thingies. <sighs> a Nomad's Bazaar. See, I told you, the little random things pop in when you, when you walk into those things that just randomly appear there. Nomads Bazaar. I believe this is for gold. So, um, ooh, let's see. White Summon. How much is a Sarah Angel? 405! Oh, you jerk. Um, let's go with White Instant. Swords. How much for a Swords? 350. Nah, crap. Sucks we're running into all this stuff when we have no gold. All right. Well, you run into these guys all the time here and there, so... Oh, well. No biggie. Let's get to a village. Save the game. Here we are at Cold Snap. Um, we're going to have an open quest right now. Nope. Okay. You're done. So what you do here on this screen is you right-click. This little menu will come up. Um, save the game. And then we will quit. Alright, that's it for our little intro to Magic the Gathering Duels of the Planeswalkers, one of my all-time favorite games. It is a lot of fun. And as, um, as I do more of these videos, we're going to explore Chandelar some more. Um, I'm going to have gone through and played ahead a little bit. Um, so that you can see more powerful decks. We'll go inside of a dungeon, show you what the dungeon looks like, and we're going to kick one of those five evil wizards' butts, go inside their castle, and show you how that goes down. So uh, it's pretty much the same as a dungeon, but a little bit different. But uh, anyway, uh, that's it for today. Um, oh, and like I said, we'll go into these other aspects, tools and duels. And, of course, you're a little player maker down here. But uh, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this game. And I hope you come back to watch me do the next video on magic. Um, that's it for now. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.